And I think that children read body language. You can be, they can be nine months old and they can see mom or dad are sad, especially a mom because they're usually around the mom the most. They can see mom is crying. They'll wipe tears from mom. So I talk to my children. I have, I have a five-year-old and she may identify that some emotions are going on and I'll talk about what the emotions are. I think that's important because kids feel they need to understand what's going on so they can be able to express whatever they're feeling in a healthy way because if they don't know how to express or talk about what they're feeling, they're going to act it out. And that's when you see a person is throwing something in the streets, dealing with uh, this tension in our communities, is that they think that their voice is unheard, so they'll do a behavior so they think they can get heard at that point, but people don't hear you, they see you. So they label the behavior versus understanding what you may potentially need to say. The same sequence happens when you're dealing with children, when they think or believe that they're not being heard because what they're feeling, they don't know how to say what they feel because they'll say, well, I don't know what I'm feeling, but you know that they're feeling something. When we ask us the same thing and we downplay it or not be open with how we are feeling about whatever we're experiencing, they're going to learn not to express themselves either because we don't express ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it can't be a one-way street. It has to be a two-way street. If I'm open, I teach them to be open. So when there is a problem, they won't hide it. They will reveal it. Then we can come up with a solution together. It's about being able to communicate and work together. And having just an open dialogue kind of starts there too. Most definitely. That's most definitely important. But if we don't create that opportunity, kids will learn not to have an open dialogue because that's what they were given by their parents. <laughs> not to talk about situation, even if it's a divorce or whatever's going on. We have to talk to them about it. If it's abuse, we have to talk to them about it so they can be aware, so they won't be caught off guard and then angry because no one told them that it was wrong because now they started doing the behavior that we want them to stop but I won't stop mine. I'm like, uh oh, there's, there's a disparity there. So, so kids are are learning. Kids are watching. What are some What are some conversation starters that parents can have? How can they start the dialogue? Some parents don't know where to start. I started mine with, uh, are, are you guys aware of what's going on in our kids? That's how I started mine. Again, I got five, and I have a eight and eleven. And I started off and one knew, the other one didn't. Uh, and I kind of talked to them about what was going on with some of the actions and behaviors in our community and why people were responding that way. And, this, and I told them it was more to, than and it was about the, the person who died in police custody. Uh, it's about the, uh, the string of things that's happened uh, with our police departments and people want to have a conversation about it. So I made it as a community type of conversation so they'll realize it's not really just about race, it's about uh, a treatment uh, for people over a period of time. A race for that one particular situation and one person. It's about a, over a period of time things that people are responding to. So they can get a more of an idea of why there was so much unrest in our communities. And they listened and they took it in. Uh, I think the conversation had to happen with them only because they're they're subject to growing up and being in a community of people that may be on the verge of changing or have not changed how they may view certain behaviors and certain people. What do you think about it? What did you hear about it? Is any of your friends talking about it on some of the games you guys playing? And I ask those questions as well because I want to get the feedback. Some one of my kids laid it down as understand what happened to this person right here, but we've never seen it happen over here. I'm like, okay, then that's good. You know, and but this is the reason probably really why it's blowing up like a deal. So I just came up a, a larger explanation of it. And then we kind of take it from there. I feed off of them or the questions they may have and I try to be as honest with them without going into a lot of uh negative detail, if you will, but more of a positive outlook on how things are impacted through some of the protests and marches versus people's lives becoming um, unraveled because people are becoming more violent because they don't know how to control their emotions nor express what they really need to say without becoming um, 
victim, uh, a victimizer themselves, you know, so that creates more of a bigger problem in my opinion. So I have to teach them those concepts. Got it. Such good information, Marcus. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I appreciate the opportunity to kind of uh, touch base with this particular subject matter. I had a few clients that came in and they had that same issue with some kids that were having problems with uh, some disparities with race. And I, I thought, man, wow, that's interesting. You know, uh, Caucasian kid, they were responding to this black kid in a very negative way. And, and it was just like, what was the reasoning behind it? You know, why would they just do that? And then this kid just felt attacked, you know, and talking to him about it, he said he felt a lot of fear at that time and he doesn't know really know what to do, but to kind of stay out the way, you know, and you don't want to create that mentality in people that they should be invisible, but they still should be okay with having a voice, you know, so I felt that was so much um, something he really didn't have to deal with, but he's dealing with this from other kids, treating him a certain way in our community, right where we live in, in our community, and I felt that, man, where did they get that mentality that they would treat him that way? And I think it's learned behavior. Yeah. It's learned behavior. We have to help people unlearn that behavior to respond better to everyone with a better response. How can people still continue their relationships? You know, even though they're, they see a lot of things and they're not sure if they can still have this relationship with someone of another race, how can they continue or discontinue a relationship? What's the process for that? I think I'd go back to the parents or even those that are in our leadership roles in our community is not just normalizing, if you will, to educate our kids, let them know that everyone does not treat everyone this way. It's a, it's a mindset of people who, who have shifted toward treating people certain ways and we have to not globalize it to make, to make this big difference in people because if we do that, we're gonna have this separate society that we live in and that's not gonna be healthy. So it could only just be that one set of people that like that group of people that was bothering this one kid. It could be just that one set of people. Teaching our children not to be global, global thinkers about people being angry and rude and disrespectful or even racist, you know, toward them by being a different color because it can just be specific and not globally. So letting them, un teaching them to understand that concept, teach them not to put everyone in one category because it was just them, it wasn't everybody. You know, keeps you more balanced. Gotcha, gotcha. Such good information, Marcus. I really appreciate it.